Hello and welcome back to Cobblecraft, K-A-0-K-A-O. We're going to be talking about GMRS radios again today. This is the second in our series. First we covered the basics, now we're going to talk about how you actually get in there and make the things work. So you're ready to push that PTT button, that press to talk, and we want to make that efficient. So how do we do that? Let's start out. Here's my list again. Um, Let's get the most out of your handheld. I encourage you to get a handheld. Here's one of them. There's plenty available. Um, the most important thing you can do with this is keep it with you and then use it. So those are two things right there. That if you don't do those, they're, they're useless little tools. Um, if you're going to keep it with you and use it, you may need some friends who are also on the other end. So encourage your friends, if you have like-minded people who may be interested in staying in touch during emergencies and things like that, or, or just keeping in touch in general, using them for walking around, hiking, things, whatever it is you do. And uh, the ham club, I encourage you to join the ham club. Those guys might be interested in GMRS as well, especially from an emergency perspective. Uh, one nice thing about GMRS, people often have some crappy little radio like this in their junk drawer. And in a time of emergency, they may need to pull that out. And if they know that you'll be on the other end, good for them. Because you've got somebody that, they've got somebody that can relay their important information to people who can help them. We'll talk more about that. Uh, so you're going to find friends who can also help you with this. If you've got a local repeater, get on it. Talk to people. Don't be afraid to push that PTT button. We'll talk more about repeaters here in a little bit. You might start an EAV chapter in your area if there isn't one. Uh, that's the... I would just encourage you to go to the website, the eavolunteers.org. Um, you'll find that there's a lot of information there that'll help you get rolling with this, and I don't want to get too far into it, but check it out. And the next thing I would say is learn the limits of your handheld. Some people call these HT, so hand, handheld transceiver. Maybe I'll refer to it that way just to save some time. Number one limit, line of sight communication like we talked about in the last video. It may go a little above and below the horizon. It may go through some buildings and some trees. All of that has a lot to do with how much power you have at your fingertips here. Uh, so you're going to need to, when you think about those limits, if you really need to get in touch with somebody, how do you do that? You're going to, first of all, find high ground. You want to make line of sight available. So if you're in a valley, try and climb to the top. Get out there where you can really get that RF going through the air. And uh, if there's a bunch of buildings, you know, they may be steel, they may be concrete, whatever. That stuff likes to filter out RF, radio frequency. So be careful there, too. Um, you want a clear path for that RF to reach your friend on the other end. And then stay within your licensed band. So GMRS is a band. It's a, a section of frequencies that you're able to use. There's a whole bunch of other bands out there, military bands, aviation bands, amateur bands for the ham guys, stuff like that. Stay within the bands that you're licensed for. Granted, you can go outside that for emergencies, but just because there's an emergency going on around you doesn't mean that you can just jump into the ham bands and help those amateurs. You need to understand that they're up to some important business. They're, they're relaying information to first responders and they don't need you jumping in there unless you know what you're doing. And so that's what the testing is about and stuff. And it's fun stuff if you wanna get in it, I'd really encourage you to do that. But don't just jump in there unless it's a real emergency. You've got somebody that needs an ambulance, that needs a fire truck, something like that, needs the police then you can probably break in and the FCC will not arrest you or fine you. But the amateur bands are self-policing, and if you're causing trouble, you're not doing anybody any good. So just keep that in mind. Stay within your bands. 
Let's talk now about these HTs. Let's push the limit of your HT. Uh, before I do, I mentioned the emergency stuff. Listen on your HT, because even if it's an emergency, you can pick up a lot of great information from those amateur radio operators. If they're passing information back and forth, it may be stuff that the news hasn't picked up, and you could be aware of it and stay away from trouble and stuff. But anyway, push the limits of your HT. How do we do that? Uh, some of these have removable antennas. So you may be able to push on, uh, oh darn it, I left it downstairs. There's different types of antennas that you can put on them. You can see this one has a taller one. I've got some that extend and contract different things. That's one way to do it. Uh, a higher quality antenna with more dB gain will be useful. Um, maybe you want to put a, a tower or a mast up and put an antenna on that and connect it to your HT by taking off your antenna and connecting the coax to it. That's what I did here for quite a while. I had a cheap Baofeng hanging there and a piece of coax going up a 17 foot mast to my cheap little antenna on top of the roof. And uh, that got me out of here, got me over to the local repeater. So that was useful stuff. When it comes to coax, don't cheap out when it comes to GMRS. GMRS is ultra high frequency radio. So uh, cheap coax has a lot of what we call loss. So if you've got eight watts of power kicking out of this and you send it 30 feet to an antenna, you're gonna lose about half of that. That's not pleasant. So you send it further, you're gonna lose more. So you want to make sure that you have good coax. And let's see here. Let's, let's discuss a little situation. Um, by, by moving on to push the limits of our base units, our mobile radios. Now, if you've got one of these in your car, uh, you may put a magnet mount antenna on, or maybe you're going to buy a little nicer one and mount it somewhere. Uh, directly to your car. You're going to have some coax coming into it. Um, that's important. Those antennas are the part that actually sends your transmission. So you want to make sure it's good stuff. That's the first thing. You want to get the most and push those limits, get a good antenna. Uh, but when it comes to pushing the limits here, compared to here on the little HTs, you're already way ahead with the base because you're kicking out at 25 or 50 watts. You're getting a lot more energy out there. So we talked about line of sight communication with the HTs especially, but it's a little more forgiving with the mobile units. A little more power will help you, for some reason, rather wrap those hills a little better sometimes and, and get out just a little further. So. Um, can't encourage you enough to invest at that end in some point in, in your uh, radio experience. I've got a buddy who lives about a mile in this direction. Pale Rider is his handle. And he uh, he has a little Baofeng. And it's a nice one. It's an 8, eight watt. And on a good day, we can talk simplex, meaning radio to radio. And with my mast, I can talk to the repeater seven miles in this direction. He can't touch the repeater with his handheld. It just isn't enough power to get there. Um, I've got another friend kind of in between, uh, Fish Eagle. And once in a great while, maybe we could talk handheld to handheld, but it, it'd be pretty rare. But he's got a really nice GMRS mobile unit in his car, 50 watts of power. It's strictly GMRS. He can be in the valleys of Little Dubuque here, and he can call out of there, and it's enough energy to hit my house. So that's probably four or five miles away with no problem. Now, if he's hitting the repeater, that's even better. So a repeater, let's talk about those. A repeater is something that, there's a blister pack of them here, of handhelds, not of repeaters. Let's say this radio wants to talk to this radio, but my water cup is in the way. It 
it's bouncing off. The RF on both of those is bouncing off. So what we can do is put a radio up here, a special radio called a repeater, and it's not going to stand there without falling over. So just pretend it's there. We'll put the antenna up. So now this radio can speak to this radio, and because it's a repeater, it will automatically repeat that transmission down to this radio. Out to everybody, actually, but this radio is, happens to be there to listen to it. So this guy can answer back by hitting here, and that will repeat down to here, and they can go back and forth. And that's a real uh, advantage. If you can find a high spot in your community and have a GMRS repeater up there that others can hit and talk to one another, then I have a good unit that I can reach out 10, 12 miles um, simplex because I've got this mast up here, but not everybody has that luxury. Some people are in low-lying areas and they need 200 feet of tower to get out. So if they are situated that they can hit that repeater, we can all carry on a conversation whether we're close or not. So highly encourage you to find a repeater. The difficulty is, depending on what you buy for a radio, not every radio will hit a repeater. So what you need is something repeater capable, obviously. And what it's going to do basically is it's going to transmit on one frequency and receive then on another frequency. So when my handheld is ready to to uh, transmit, see how it says 462 here right now? Gosh, can I do this? When I push that transmit, it changes to 467. I release it, it turns back to 462. So that is our channel 22 repeater. And I transmit on 467. When, as soon as I push that button, it does it automatically. And that's what you need in a repeater capable unit. Uh, almost any base unit will have that uh, feature to it, uh, mobile units. So I encourage you to look into that as well. And again, when you're buying a radio, especially any of the Baofangs, um, make sure they're either GMRS compatible or that they can be programmed up to uh, 470 megahertz because that's what you'll be needing in that range of the band in order to program it for GMRS use. So with that, we're approaching um, the 15 minute mark and I wanna cut it off before then. So I'd encourage you to like, share, uh, subscribe, uh, pass the information around and be sure and comment below with any questions or if you wanna call me out on something that I said wrong, have fun. KA0KAL clear.